Hallelujah. Can I see your Bible? Lift it up. We, we do this confession every time we want to share the word of God. Shout, this is my Bible. I want, I want the devil to know that's your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. And let God know, this is the word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. This morning, I'm about to receive this ever-living, infallible, incorruptible word of the living God. Are you ready? Shout, my heart is ready. My spirit is ready. I will never be the same again. Shake your head and say, never, never, never. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, as we read the word of God now for the next few minutes, I ask that, Lord, let your blessings be upon your people. We came for only one reason, to worship you. And, Lord, here we are. Speak to us, Lord. Minister to us and bless us this day. As we share the word of God, may your spirit, may your presence, may your anointing, may the revelation of the same be evident in this service. Let none of these men and women that came in to worship you leave and go back to their homes the same way that they came in, Lord. But for the next few minutes, Lord, speak to our hearts and help us, Father, to know that you are the Lord God who lives and reigns forevermore. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe and we say again, Amen. God bless you. Amen. Okay, now I want to tie up the message that I began on. I, I intended to finish, but I didn't. On the spirit of Akan. How many can remember the spirit of Akan? All right, I want to tie up that message. If you're here for the first time, please feel very comfortable. Follow with us. I know I'll be picking it up in the middle, but I trust the Holy Spirit of God will guide you and help you to be able to connect with whatever else you never had when I spoke about this a week ago. Uh, we were talking about Israel when they were leaving the land of Canaan, I mean, leaving the land of Egypt, almost entering the land which God had given to them. In, in fact, actually, they had entered the land. And then something happened to them before they began taking conquests in the land which God had promised them through his servant, Abraham. And... Uh, our message was basically the Akan spirit that hinders your advancement. That was the title of our message. The Akan spirit that hinders your advancement. Now remember, this year we've been running with the topic. Actually, our theme has been gaining more territory. That has been our theme. And by God's grace, we have explored this theme from day one until last Sunday when we had a guest minister here. We were still exploring. You can never finish that theme. And uh, it is our hope and our prayer, by the end of the year, the Lord will have taken you to the place where you intended to be when this year began. Okay? That's my prayer. And uh, this word that I'm sharing with you came to me because I realized that there are certain things that come in our way that stop us from reaching where God wants us to take us. There are certain things that come in our way that stop us from reaching where God wants us to go. Or things that can stop you, are you gaining your territory. This is what happened to Israel. Because these men have been in the wilderness like we had last Sunday, 40 years. And somehow God has now done a miracle. He has opened the door for them and he has told Josh, Joshua, through his servant Moses, you are the man who will now take these people and inherit them the land which I'm giving to them. But unfortunately, as they begin on the next venture, as they now move to what we would call here at the, at the next level, as they begin now gaining their territories, something happens. Something happens. A man by the name of Akan stops their advancement. Let me just go straight to it. Which, in my opinion, sometimes when God wants us to move into the place where he wants us to go, when we have finished step one and we are going into step two, if we are not very, very careful, we can allow the spirit of Akan to stop our spiritual advancement. Advancement, not advancement. Advancement. Okay? And this happened when Joshua had, had, had actually crossed the... The, the, the river Jordan. We know the story of the river Jordan. They've had a miracle on that river. The, the river has opened and Joshua has walked through the waters. You know, he has actually walked over the waters of the river Jordan. Okay? And he has gone to the other side of the river Jordan. And the scripture is telling me, the scripture tells us, they have gone to the walls of Jericho. They have brought Jericho down. As I said the other time, Jericho was the greatest city that ever existed in that time. In fact, Jerusalem wasn't a city. 
It was there, yes, but it wasn't as we know it today. The greatest city that existed in the days of uh, Joshua, the biggest city that existed was the city of Jericho. Actually, that was like the Nairobi that we have here today. And uh, Joshua, by God's grace, over overruns the city of Jericho and is now on his way now to go and take the land which God had given to them. Unfortunately, a very tiny city, very, very small city, a small thing which would just run over. In fact, when they were thinking about this small town, the elders came to Joshua, they told Joshua, don't even bother the people. This is something, something very little. Just give us a few men, 300 men, and we'll run over this city, okay? And Joshua quickly decided to put together a team of 300 people, and they, went, they began going to this small city. Unfortunately, this small thing that, you, that they were ignoring, this small city which they thought was just useless, became the, the only city in the Bible that actually overran Israel and became a big hindrance to the advan advancement of, this, uh, of these uh, people into the land which God was giving them. And this was a city called by the name of Aya. Okay, it sounds like a Kamba name. Aya. All right? A-I. Aya. The city of Aya, which I spoke about the other time. Now, Aya wasn't the problem. The problem wasn't actually Aya. Aya was meant to be destroyed, actually. And God had plans for Israel just to walk over that Aya and get into the land. Okay? Like I would say, many of the things you struggle with are not a problem. Believe me, some of the issues that you are faced with in life are not actually the problem. The problem is somebody else that I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about here. Another spirit which is inside of us. That is where the problem is. Aya wasn't a problem, but it became a stronghold because there was somebody by the name of Achan, a man called Achan, who became a problem. Because when they were crossing Jericho to the land of, uh, into the land now, they have just now crossed over into Jericho, I mean crossed over Jericho, God commanded Israelis, he told Israel, do not take anything that belongs to Jericho. Because Jericho was a type of the entry, it was a type of the world. When a person gets born again, the first thing we do is we renounce our sins. We throw away anything that belonged to the world. And I'm using the word world here for you to understand what I'm talking about. When you come to Jesus and you are telling him, come into my life, the first thing which God demands of you is to put away everything that belongs to this world. Okay? Now he told the Israelites, when you are entering the city of Jericho, burn it. And make sure you don't pick anything in that city. Being a very prosperous city, it was full of gold. It was full of silver. It, had, it was full of uh, fashion, like we know. Okay? It was a glamorous city. And these brethren, as they were walking over that city, there was one man by the name of Achan. This man was badly influenced. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment from now. Instead of him obeying the word which God had spoken to him, he allowed another spirit to enter into him. And he ended up picking some of the things which God had told them they should not be able to take. He picked some gold, he picked some silver, then he went ahead and picked some clothes. There was some linen, some clothing that was there, which this man coveted, and he picked these things, yet knowing nobody seeing him, thinking that nobody's seeing him, he went and hid those things in his tent in the ground somewhere. They finished the conquest of Jericho, people went back with victory, they were rejoicing, they were happy, but they didn't know there was somebody in their midst. And that is the problem which the church has today. The problem which many believers have today. You seem to be very, very okay. People look at you, they rejoice when they see you the way you look. But there is a small thing, we call it the hidden sin. Like a small thing inside of your life. Like a small thing inside your family. Or like a small thing inside your ministry, if I could, I could zero it down. A small thing inside the church. A small, small thing that we have entertained in our life, which we know the Bible has told us not to take into our lives. And then we assume nobody has seen it. We assume God is not seeing it. And we think we can move on with that specific thing. That is what I'm calling here the spirit of Achan. And I was quick to tell you that when uh, God spoke to Abraham in the first instance, when he was leaving the land of Ur, he took him to a place called Bethel. This Bethel place was a place between Ea, Aia, and Bethel. A specific area, the Bible calls it a certain place. And this is the place where God told Abraham, he told Abraham, the land which I'm giving to you, I am giving to you. And he made a covenant with him. All the way from the land of Mesopotamia, from the land of all the Chaldeans, God had never told Abraham where he was taking him. He just said, go and I'll take you to a land that I'm going to give to you. 
When he got to this place called Bethel, is when God speaks to Abraham and he says, now lift up your eyes and see the land which I'm giving to you. And that couldn't have happened before God dealing with another spirit that was following Abraham. I call it the spirit of Lot. There was a gentleman, his nephew, who had come along with Abraham. I'm sharing this to give you a background. Because we carry along with us things that God never intended us to carry. When God calls you, it doesn't carry, it does, it doesn't carry, it doesn't call you with other th certain things. Okay? He, to he told Abraham, come, and Abraham left with his wife, okay, and a few flocks that he had. But if you read the Bible, it says, and his nephew went with him. Which, in my opinion, there are things we entertain in our lives that are never the will of God in our lives. And I pray this morning, don't allow anything in your life that does not belong to the will of God. That is my prayer for you. As I'm preaching, scan your own life. Look at yourself and say, is there anything in me that is standing in my way of my spiritual advancement? That is my, my, my prayer for you. So that if you discover there is something you have, you've carried along with you that is standing in the way of your spiritual progress, my friend, deal with it this morning. Especially as we move into the next level of our blessings. Because me, I believe as we go into this conference, God is moving us to another level. He didn't say amen. It's a good place to say amen. God is moving us. He has ever done it. We have, we have always seen him move us. And so Abraham here, God tells Abraham, I mean, he tells Abraham at the place of Bethel, lift up your eyes after Lot had left him. And I can tell you the reason why Lot left him. I mentioned that the other Sunday. I said, as long as Lot was with Abraham, he couldn't, Abraham could never see what God had intended for him. Instead, Lot became a problem. Because as Abraham was progressing, Lot also was progressing. That was a promise God had given to Abraham. And I can assure you, that fellow you are carrying with you, the blessings that God gives you, he'll also share in those blessings. The only problem, he will become a problem to you in the end. Until Lot began fighting with Abraham, the, the, his servants. Then Abraham tells Lot, why should we fight? We are brethren. He tells Lot, choose where you want to go. I'm coming now to Aya here. And then Lot lifts his eyes and he sees. What does Lot see? He turns and sees Aya and the plains of Jordan. Because if you look at my map, which I had put up there, if somebody can give, put it up here, I will show you where Aya belonged. This will help you to understand why Aya was a problem. Okay? Aya was towards what we call as the Jordan Valley. Okay? Towards the Jordan Valley. Could you just flash my map up here? Towards the Jordan Valley. This is the place where the city of Jericho was located. The city which God had told them, destroy this city, don't leave it. Okay? From, 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 from Bethel, you would pass through Aia, then you would go to the city of Jericho. As you can see there, Bethel is right there. Gibeon is down there. Shiloh is up there, the mountain where, 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 where Samuel used to stay. But if you look at Bethel, you will see Aia as the intersection, the place between the place, the place leading towards Jericho. So when Lot lifted up his eyes, the Bible tells me, he, 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 he saw the plains of Jericho, the plains of the Jordan. The river Jordan is from Gigal down there going up. That's the river Jordan, okay? Where you can see Gigal up there, the stream which is going up there. That is east of Bethel. That is where Lot chose to go. And I can, I can tell you the Bible describes the cities that were in those places right from Aya, to Jericho, there was Sodom in between and Gomorrah. Those cities were seriously wicked. In fact, those cities speak of the world that we live in. They speak of the kind of life that many of us want to have today. Okay? And then Lot pinched his tent towards the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. In my opinion, Lot actually left Aya and went and settled in the plains of Jericho towards the river Jordan. So that area was basically a kind of a world which God didn't entertain. And we know the story of Lot, we know the story of Abraham, how God attempted to destroy that place through the fires that we know. And how God attempted to save Lot from the place that he had actually gone to settle. To me, in my mind, the reason why he told Israel, don't take anything from this place, God was testing them to see whether Israel can be in this problem or Israel can be a, a, a people that can trust him and refuse anything which belongs to the devil. And I'll tell you, believer, when you're born again, you're not free from the world. You know, people think when I'm born again, everything is just going to be okay. No, you are still living in the world. The world is still around us. 
And sometimes God has to test you and see, are you serious with this business? He will sometimes restrain you from some of the things that appear very good in your eyes so that he can test to see, do you truly love me? I'll go back to my message. So Joshua, the Lord instructs Joshua. And he tells Joshua, after you have crossed the river Jordan. Remember they were in Egypt. Let's go back a little bit here. They were in Egypt 400 years. When they went to Egypt, there were few people. They are now living in Egypt when they are a great company of people. They are a big nation. The promise which he had given Abraham, I will make you a great nation. So they are coming back as a great nation. In the wilderness, he, he speaks to them through Moses and he says, after you have crossed the river Jordan, you will go to a place called Gab. Can somebody help me? A place called what? Where they are going to host their flag. Those who were here last Sunday. I want to remind you. A place called what? Where they were going to host their flag. Abel. A place called Abel. And Abel, go back to my map please. Abel, just want to connect it. Abel, if my technicians can take me back. Abel was a place after Bethel. You see where Bethel is? A little north of Bethel there, there was a place called Abel. I don't know why God does things that, that way. I, I guess it must be between Shiloh and Bethel there. This, there was a big mountain on that place called Mount, Mount Abel. So he tells Israel, as soon as you cross the Jordan and you reach the land where I'm reaching, I'm, I'm giving to you, go to that land and declare the nation. You know, you can never take over until you are, you are an organized nation. Okay? You can never be independent until you declare your, your independence. Yesterday we were celebrating Madaraka, eh? It was self-rule. But on 12th of December, we had an independence de declaration where we were given our flag, we were given our constitution by the British people, and we were declared Kenya an independent state. I'm doing a little Bible study here. So they were supposed to go to a place called, after Bethel there, a place called Ed, 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 Edel, and then declare, make a declaration of their state. Where they would be able now, Joshua would blow the trumpet, and he would speak to the people and say, now the state of Israel is now born. Then after that, God would give them the power to begin now gaining more territory as they conquer the land where they are going to. Are you listening to me? Now, this wasn't going to happen. And I want to make a very strong statement here. Your freedom and your independence as a believer will never happen until you conquer Aya. Let me repeat that again. You will never enjoy your Christian work with God. You know, we have many believers today who are simply struggling. I don't know whether you're getting me. You, you, you are fighting sin, you are fighting your life, you are fighting your eyes, you are fighting your desire, you are simply in constant battle. I've got good news for you. The good news is defeat Aya. If you deal with the Akan problem at Aya, I'm telling you the land is before you. That is where now you can stand out and you can say, I am now free. It is my prayer. I want God to make me a believer who will enjoy my Christian walk with God. And that can only happen when I have been freed from some of the things that are tying me down. Abraham couldn't have seen the freedom of inheriting the land until the Lord told him, now lift up your eyes, Abraham. The struggles of looking for it are over. Now it is time for you to scale the land and take the land which I'm giving to you. So Aya was this problem there where Achan was revealed. It was simply a revelation of Achan. It was not anything. God wanted simply to find out who this Achan is. And so when they got to Aya, 300 men, the Bible tells me the men of Aya that were just a handful of people beat up the Israelites and killed 30 of them within a second that Israel began to tremble and shake. And then they retreated back and went back to the place where they were. They were camping near the, 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 the city of Jericho and reported back to Joshua. And that now became a very devastating thing. Let me share a few things here. Who was this man, Achan? Who was Achan? Achan, who was Achan? Let me begin with that. Achan was basically, if I could say, he was basically the son of a fellow called Zebdi. He came from the tribe of Judah. Judah was the kingly tribe, we know that. 
And we know Achan, as we have said here, his name basically means trouble. Means trouble. And we know the reason why the Achan, the name trouble comes from the problems that Achan caused to the children of Israel during their conquest of the land. Now, Achan is a type of the kind of things that we, are, we, we, we carry with us in our lives. I'm looking for a better word. Achan is like the, 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 the spirit of Achan is like the, 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 the kind of uh, situations that we encounter in our lives that stop us or cause trouble in our lives, in our spiritual adva ad advancement. I'll use, I'll, use a, I'll, I'll use a word here that many of us are aware of. Akan is a spirit that will always come in our way to stop us from taking or moving into the place of progress that God wants us to move to. And this spirit is characterized by only one word, and this is the word. The word L-U-S-T. L-U-S-T. That means... Last. Can someone say last? Last is not L-A-S-T. That's a good one. I'm talking about L-U-S-T. The word last. Just like Lot, the same place where Achan had problems, is the same place where Lot landed. The valley of the Jordan. Abraham couldn't have got his promise without until Lot left and went there. And I'm repeating this for you to get it right. Akan spirit and Lord spirit is the same. It's the spirit of lust, which stands in the way of believers in receiving spiritual freedom. It is the spirit of R-L-U-S-T that stands in the way of believers and hinders them from receiving their spiritual freedom and making advancement in the places where God wants them to go. And you will understand better because I know you know what I'm talking about. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 4. Please put it up. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to verse 4. These are the words of, I believe, Paul. I'm sure he's the one who wrote the book of Hebrews. Paul speaking in those words, he says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's read together. He says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Please help me read there. He says, he says what? Let us do what? Can we repeat again? Let us do what? Lay aside what? Every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us. And let us run with endurance the stress that is set before us. Could you put it in... King James original version. I know this, this, these are good versions. Let's read one more time. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, the sin of lust are the, the sins that easily beset us. I'll give an example. If I had some weights on my legs, I'm, I'm running a race. Then you take some weight. You know the weight here? You take some weight and you tie one on my leg. You tie another one on my other leg. How fast do you think I can run the race? Or you tie one weight on my hand. You tie another weight on my hand. How do you think I'll run the race? That's, that's the example the man, the man of God is giving here. He's saying there are many believers, many Christians today, who have weights, weights, things which weigh you down. Things which stand in your way. I know, I know and as I speak, you know. You want to make progress, but there are things which are holding you back. You want to move ahead, but there are things which are holding you back. That's what the Bible is talking about here. It says weights that so easily beset us. You look at it, 
it might not appear like anything, I mean, anything very special or anything very big. But these are the things which are standing in the way of your spiritual progress. Akan was only one man. It was not many. I don't know how many of these Israelites were at that particular moment. There were very many. But look, only one man in the company of many. One man in the company of many. He has simply taken something for himself, not for all of us. And he has hidden that thing for his own benefit. But this one man easily beset the whole congregation in making any advancement into the place where he was going. And I can tell you, friend, without any hesitation here, there could be things which you are holding in your life and you are saying this is nothing, something small. Maybe the pastor is not seeing it. Maybe my wife is not seeing it. Maybe my children don't even know about it. Those are the sins that easily beset us. And I'm here to announce to you, as long as those sins are besetting you, you will never make any spiritual advancement. Paul writing in verse 2, chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, he says, let me finish this verse. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and you faint in your mind. Many things will come that will try to make you tired or make you faint in your mind. But the Bible is telling you here, you must endure. You must refuse. And let me tell you some of these things, you must work on them. They are not things which will just go away by wishing them. No, you must be there to work on them. No wonder Israel couldn't make any spiritual advancement at all. Until God told Joshua there is sin in the camp. Joshua goes to God and is crying. We'll look at that scripture in a moment from now. And as he's crying, God is telling Joshua there is a problem in the camp. He says you cannot go anywhere until you have dealt with this sin that is easily besetting you. The sin of lust. Let me define what lust is. Lust is simply a yearning, a craving, an overmastering desire. A yearning, 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 eh? yearning, eh? yearning. I'm sure you know what I mean by yearning. Yearning for something, craving for something. An overmastering desire. It is, an, it is uncontrolled or illicit sexual desire or appetite. Somebody who is full of lust, he will be yearning for something, craving for something. You can never be restful. When you are sitting, something is eating you. Even the flesh itself is just yearning. Okay? That's the meaning of the word, lust. And the entry point for lust, the entry point for lust is the eyes. Macho. These eyes are good. Can you look at your friend? He has eyes. But let me tell you, those, the eyes are the, the most terrible things that God ever gave man. Eyes, we call them, they are the highway into the soul of men or the soul of man. I'm sure when you're looking at me already, you, you have defined me. Isn't it? By just seeing Mulema, looking at Pastor Mulema like this, your eyes will speak to you. If you like me, you've already liked me. If you didn't like, the eyes have seen me and you don't like me, you have already ruled me out. The entry point of lust is the eyes. Let me continue. The cravings are caused by three things. Craving is caused by three. That yearning is caused by three things. Those three things are this. Number one, our feelings, our emotions. When the eyes see, how do we feel in our bodies? How do we react to the feeling, the emotions that we have? Number two, the second thing is that our, our appetite. Our appetites. What is it that now you begin salivating for? I'm talking to mature people here. Appetite. This is what we call as the flesh. The flesh begins demanding. It begins, it gets appetite. Number three, desire. Okay, number three, our reactions when we have fulfilled that appetite. Our reactions when we fulfill that appetite. What we are calling here, I'm, I'm calling it here reactions to our achievements. Our achievements. Number one, you have seen with the eyes, you begin feeling emotional about it. 
Number two, you crave for it and then you have it. After having it and you are happy, what are the reactions of that? That's when appetite is fulfilled. And if you check in the Bible, this is the sin which has always hit man from the beginning of creation. Go back to the story of, uh, of, of Eve in the garden. The snake or the, the serpent takes the fruit and gives to Eve. The Bible says, and Eve looked at the fruit. So that it was good for what? For food. Appetite. Good for food. Flesh. Then the Bible says, and it was desired to make one wise. And it was like the garden of the Lord. Then Eve took the fruit and ate it. That's where lust comes in. Look at Lot. Abraham is telling Lot, the land is before you, the whole land. Lot looks and the Bible says, and when he saw the land before him, it was like the garden of the Lord. The well plains, the well watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then Lot desired to go that direction. That is the thing which has destroyed so many believers. Today we don't want to preach it in the church. Today we can tell you everything is okay. But let me tell you the sin that is eating the church today is not the sin of murder. It's not the sin of stealing. There is a small sin inherent in believers that is called lust. I'm sure you're listening to me. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible speaking, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to verse 17. I have 10 more minutes. 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. It says, love not the world. Love not the world. Achan, when he entered the land of, each, of, of, of the, the, uh, 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 Jericho, as other people were busy destroying, taking conquest, I I'm sure everybody had eyes. Sinikweli. Siwaliona wengine. Eh? Jericho was full of gold. Jericho was full of good linen. But Akan, Akan, I'm saying but Akan, as others were busy, busy destroying, Akan, the eyes were just, you know, we come to church, others are worshiping, others, their eyes are just scanning everybody. <laughs> you, you spend the whole service just checking how the worship leader was dressed. Am I talking the truth? Or Pastor Mlema, now you're not preaching here. I think, I, think, I, think, I think those are the messages people don't want to hear. Instead of you worshipping the Lord, you are spending a lot of your energies on how other women are dressed. Even how they are walking. That, that was Akan, the spirit of Akan. Let me move on. He says, love not the world, neither the things which are in the world. Can you read with me? If any man does what? Love the world, the love of the Father. Is not in him. Meaning anybody who scans the things of the world. The people who scan the... It doesn't matter whether you are born again or not. As long as you love the world. The Bible says the love of the Father is not in you. That's very hard. Then John explains what this is all about. In verse, in, in, in verse 16 he says, For all that is in the world. And this is what was before Achan. This is what was before Lot. This is what was before Eve when the devil showed him and he told him, look. He says, for all that is in the world, then he begins to explain. Please help me here. The last of? The, it begins with the last of? The flesh. And then? The last of? The eyes. And then? The pride of life. These things is not of the Father, but is of? The world. If I stop there, you will say, but uh, pastor, you know we are humans. Verse 17 says, look at verse 17. And the world passes away, and the last thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth. Now which one do you want? The world or the will of God? Can I see how many people want the will of God? Lift up your hand. Wonderful. The world and the last thereof passes away. 
And I can assure you, the things that many of us are craving for, yearning for, those things will do what? Pass away. But he that does the will of God, the Bible tells me, that man will abide forever. As long as the Akan spirit was in the people of God, God said, you're not moving anywhere. Look at the confession of this man, because this will help you to get what I'm talking. Joshua chapter 7, verse 20 to verse 21. Joshua 7, 20 to 21. This is Achan now when he has been cornered by Joshua. They have, done, they, have, they have gone through the whole process of scanning everybody to find out where is this thing which God is saying is an unclean thing among the people. Because when Joshua went to God in prayer, God told Joshua, you cannot move any step because there is an unclean thing among you. After finding Achan, this, this is the confession of Achan. The Bible says, and Achan answered Joshua, and he said, he said, indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus, and thus have I done. I don't know why he repeated thus twice. And thus, and thus have I done. Verse 21. When I saw among the spoils, please help me. What did he see? What did he see? A goodly what? Babylon, Babi? Babylonish. I don't know how I can knew the garment was from Babylon. I think it must have been written here, made in. Yeah. Like many of us here, made in Italy. In this service, what is it that you are seeing? Ask your friend, what are you seeing? Eh? Made in where? He saw a, a, a garment made in Babylon. And remember, Babylon always stands again for bondage. Let me shock you by telling you this. Today, the church is not the church. The church is not the church. Sorry to tell you that. The church is now the world in a building called church. Can I be a bit hard here? Even the styles that some of us do, they're not from the church. You, you, you will sit on the, on the TV and see a man from Hollywood. The way the Hollywood fellow is dressed. That's the way the worship leader will dress. You know, you're not listening to me. Am I saying the truth? And then you say, Pastor, God looks where? In the heart. But look, this man saw a garment from Babylon. The Lord says, I don't want Babylonian garments in my people, among my people. And I want to let you know this. It is the church that should set standards. I mean, not the world. Today, the world is the one that is setting standards for the church. The way the church behaves, the way the church sings, the way the church dresses, the way we even communicate, all those things that we are copying, they are from Babylon. But yet we bring them in and we say, we must be relevant. That's what that man saw there. And then he went further and says, and 200 shekels of silver. Today the church is more of money than anything. Am I right? Today we are living in corruption. Somebody is telling me that. That even we can stand on the pulpit and ask, who has more money? I begin asking, Kennedy, so you found me here preaching. Who has more money? That is now the church. And some of you are so committed, so dedicated, you'll still be sitting there and enjoying that sermon. Listen, he says, and I saw shekels and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weighing 10. I, the word I want you to get there is I did what? I coveted them. I coveted them. In other words, when my eyes saw it, I began craving for them. And I went ahead, he speaks and even confessed, and I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. The silver and it. This man thought nobody was seeing him. But let me tell you, God had already seen there was an unclean thing. 
And I want you to know something, even if you hide it, God knows there is an unclean thing which you must deal with if you want to make spiritual advancement. You will never move anywhere until you deal with some of those things which many of us are hiding. The lust of the flesh. The things which the flesh is craving for. The body. You know these bodies that we are carrying on us, they are, they are, they are restless. Someone told me, if she passes, I, I become restless. There is something wrong with you. If I see food, I cannot, I cannot contain myself. There is something wrong with you. The appetites of the flesh. Until we begin dealing with those things, my friend. In fact, the sins of Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verse, is it 19 or 22? Chapter 9, Galatians. Chapter, chapter 2? Chapter 5, verse from 18. All those things are as a result of the three things that we are seeing here. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Three things which are eating up the church today. We have lost focus. We are not listening to God anymore. We think the house of God is a place where we go for benefits. We think our life being believers are meant for benefit. Let me tell you, being born again wasn't meant for you to benefit. It was only meant for you to see eternity. Because the kingdom of God has more better things than what this world has. You know, for Akan, when he saw the gold, he began to imagine we are going home. We are arriving now at home. Let me pick this gold very quickly so that when I reach where I'm going, I'll put up my house. But God wasn't going to depend on the gold of the Babylonians. And I can tell you as a believer, God will not depend on the gold of the sinners. It is God who has given you the promise. It is God who has made a covenant with you. And there is no devil, there is no spirit that will promote you into the place of your inheritance unless you obey what the word of God says. That's why the Bible tells me there. The works of the flesh are manifest. You can never hide them. Thank you for that scripture. And he has mentioned them here. I'm planning this one Sunday. We are going to, we are going to preach on this. And dissect each one of these things one by one. Are you listening to me? Adultery. Can somebody say adultery? Another one? What is fornication? What is fornication? I think now you're quiet. Help me, what is fornication here? Fornication here is when you are living with a man who is not your husband. Adultery is when you are married, but you are still entertaining another man or another woman. You're not, you're not hearing me. Can I explain? Adultery is when you are married, but you are still sending signals. To someone else who is not your husband and is not your wife. Fornication is when you are not married and you are staying with somebody or you are moving with somebody who is not your wife and who is not your husband. Those are things that are very common today. Ask your friend. Turn to your friend ask him, are they manifest? And cleanless, and cleanless there. Uchafu. Even, even being dirty is not acceptable in the kingdom of God. This is why we were cleaning yesterday. And the majority of you didn't come. I want to appreciate those who came. That's what I wanted to say. I forgot. So you can see how the streets look clean. But after a while, you will be dropping papers everywhere. By the way, can I beg you? I'm putting beans all over the church this week. Because last Sunday, when, I, when we left church, the place was chaotic. There were papers all over. Everything was everywhere. If you love Jesus, don't litter. Tell your friend, don't litter. And also tell your children. Not to do what? Even in your home, don't do what? In your estate, don't do what? Because God doesn't like what? And this goes deeper than just garbage. Even the unclean thing you do yourself, you know. The next one is what? La, the, the what? I know if I explain that one, some of you will run away. 
Eh? Do you know the meaning of that one? What does it mean in Kiswahili? Those who, who, who interpret. I'll make it easy for you. Can you, can, you, can you put up another translation, my friend up there? That was not my message, but I'm stopping here now. I'll continue another day. Another translation. Put in another translation. Let them see it. What is it? Put another translation. Maybe this one they won't understand even further. If I ask them debauchery, they will not understand. Is what? What? Can you understand that one? What does it mean? Eh? Sister Masi, what does it mean? Ofisadi. Eh? Kwa Kiswahili nini? Ofisadi. It's corruption. Anything that is corrupt, anything that is bad, anything that is not acceptable, lavishness, anything which is not good. And you can go down all with, with, with those ones. I won't go into the, the 19. The Bible says those who do these things, they do not belong to God. They belong to what? Can I give you homework? Go home, read that scripture. Then check in your dictionary what each one of those words means. When we meet again, we will talk about that. The Lord Jesus bless everyone. I'm going to stop at that. But the sin of Anna, Akan must be must be done what? Dealt with. Can we stand up on our feet? I don't want to take us beyond the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord for a moment. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful for this morning. Oh, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your blessing, Lord. Thank you because Jesus is Lord. Even in situations that are so hard, Jesus remains Lord. Father, help us this morning, each one of your people that is gathered here today. That if there be any sin that is hidden, the hidden sins, the hidden sins, Lord, the hidden sins that no one can see, things that we do in secret, Lord, things that Father we are born with, things that Father we love to do, when no one can be able to see us. I ask you this morning, let your spirit reveal them to your people today. Things that we have hid in our tents, Lord, things that we have hid under the earth our earthly tabernacles that you've given us, Father. I pray this morning, let the Holy Spirit of God reveal them to us, that none of us may find ourselves on the other side of eternity. We ask the Holy Spirit of God to minister to us this morning. Take away every desire. Take away every pride. Take away, dear Father, anything that the enemy is using against the church. Give us the eyes of Abraham, Lord, the eyes of faith, that even as we see mountains, we can still say, yes, that's where we are going. When we see the valleys, we can still go down to the valleys. When we see the rough terrains, Lord, we can still walk in them, Lord, and take the land the Lord you are giving to us this day. We refuse the plains of Babylon. We refuse the plains of Jordan, my Father. We, we say today, Father, give us an eye that we will go beyond the world. That, Lord, we may see the blessings that, Lord, you've given us in the land of the living. Oh, we love you. We give you praise this morning. We appreciate you, Lord, for your love and for your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Take away the spirit of, 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 of Achan from us, Lord. The spirit of Lot, my Father, take it away from us. Teach us, Lord, to love you. Teach us, Lord, to endure. Even when things are tough, Lord, when nothing seems to be working for us, Father, lift our eyes to see where Jesus is, O oh God. That after we have done it all, we may receive the promise. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we love you, Jesus. I bless everybody in this congregation this morning. And I pray that, Lord Jesus, wherever we go and wherever we are, whatever we do, Lord, we shall be men and women of faith that do not look left or right, my Father, but those that, Lord, focus our attention on what God has done for us and on Jesus. That is the author and the finisher of our faith. That is our prayer this morning. 
That is our prayer this morning, Holy Spirit of God. That is our prayer this morning, dear Father. Hallelujah. We give you the glory today. And we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are grateful. We believe you are taking us to the place of new territories. You have spoken to us again and again. That behold, the land lies bare before us. And you've commanded us, Lord, to walk into it and receive the blessing that you have for us. And I pray for your people this morning, Lord, let nothing stand in their way that will hinder them. If there is anyone that Father finds himself in an awkward situation, forgive that person, Lord. Forgive him, Lord. Take away every obstacle. Take away every sin. Take away every spirit. Lord, take away every hindrance that is standing in his way and cause your people to move into their territories of their blessings. Lord, in their families, in their workplaces, in their businesses, in their personal spiritual lives, Lord, in their ministries, in our church, Lord, in general, in every area that, Lord, we are intending to walk in, may your presence, Father, be with us. And may you give us the ability to walk in and take the land the Lord you've given to us. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus.